Hey crafty friend, it's Amanda from Pear Blossom Press and I am so excited to join you today. I've got a silly little Christmas card that I've been wanting to make for a while and today's video is part of a hop celebrating several of us reaching about 4,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel and we thought it would be fun to get together, share something fun. Um, so I have this Christmas card because it's, you know, Christmas in July. <laughs> um, I wanted to keep the video pretty short so I've already gone ahead and cut everything else off screen. Uh, I'm making a mini slimline card. So I've got a black card base. I've also got a white panel to go inside and a spacey background that I created with just distress oxides and some Copic white. For my little characters, the alien, the spaceship, the Santa Claus, I've got those two little lawn fawn sets with their coordinating dies, um, which I've already colored the guys with Copics. For the spaceship, I did stamp him on silver mirror cardstock and then trimmed it down. Uh, and then I cut out the whole spaceship from acetate and black cardstock. For the tractor beam, I stamped it and heat embossed it in white on vellum. And for the little Santa hat on my alien, that's for the inside panel, I went ahead and I stamped the Santa hat and masked off and then I stamped the alien underneath him. Uh, again, those are Copic markers that I colored them with and it was just, they're small, so it was easy. For the backgrounds, I cut out some trees and the little log cabin there from um, one of the add-ons. I used clouds from the plain and simple set and then the hillside backgrounds as well. And I did stamp and emboss the push me sentiment and for the i believe which i thought was a fun little sentiment to go with this um there there isn't like a separate eye in there but there is an exclamation point in that stamp set so i turned it upside down um i, I thought that worked pretty good <laughs> um it's, it's kind of a fun font so it works well and then to light up this card we're going to be using a one light now this is one of the long skinny ones that comes in the center of our new halo light combo pack but the original ones will work as well we're also going to use some double thick foam tape i'm showing you the clear here which we'll use and then also some of the white to get started i'm going to build the background first and I went ahead and I actually cut all of these pieces from black cardstock first. And then when I sort of laid it out to begin with, it felt a little too dark. You couldn't see the details. So I, I just ink blended some gray distress oxide ink over the top of all of those background pieces. And I like the way it looks. I probably would have cut it from gray cardstock to begin with if I would thought about it ahead of time. But I do like the extra shading and detail that you get here. So I'm going to just kind of map out the background, the small trees in the back, the log cabin on the back hillside, and the bigger trees will go in the front because they're closer. Um, but before I glue any of this down, I do want to bring in the other pieces too, so that I know how close um, that, or how sorry, how high up that second hillside should be. Uh, and I also don't want to lose all of the trees in the log cabin underneath the tractor beam because even though it's vellum, you won't see much of them. Um, so I'm just going to kind of lay it all out first before I glue it down. And then I like the placement so I can go ahead and start gluing it. I'm going to glue that log cabin to the back hillside. And then I've got a little trick so that I remember how high up to put the... Um, the, the second hillside there. I'm gonna take one of those trees from the background and I'm just gonna glue it in place. And then that way I can move everything else out of the way. And when I grab that second hillside and add glue to it, instead of having to relay it all out again, I can just line it back up against that tree. So it's just one of those little time savers. You don't have to mark it with a pencil or anything like that. Then I'll just go ahead and tuck everything back in the little trees um, in the back again and those bigger trees would obviously be closer so uh, they'll be on the uh, front hillside and then after I get everything glued in place I'm not afraid to glue over the edge because I am going to trim this down but after I get it all in place there I can bring in my trimmer and trim it off since I have already embossed the sentiment. I want to make sure not to get too close to that. So I'm going to trim a little bit more off the left side than I will from the right. And obviously my trimmer, <laughs> the little cutting mat needs to be replaced. It's, it's cut all the way through. 
<laughs> so it, it doesn't give me great cut lines anymore. I need to need to fix that. Um, so you saw I took more off the left side than the right. And then I'll just take um, a little bit more off the top rather than anything off the bottom. And in total, I took it down 3 eighths of an inch smaller than my card uh, base. And then this is a trick that I learned from Lydia Fiedler. If your trimmer is like mine and <laughs> needs the mat replaced or the blade replaced, you can use a nail file sanding block and clean up the edges. So I'm just making sure that I have the same size border for both the front and the back panel or the inside panel. And then I can glue them to my card base. And I'm just using PVA glue there. That's my preferred uh, method for paper to paper adhesive. In a fine line bottle, you don't get so much that it warps or anything. It dries quickly and it holds really well, but you do have a little bit of wiggle room. So I tend to use wet adhesive when I can. And notice that at this point, this card is still flat. There's no foam tape happening yet. Um, we're going to sandwich the light between the die cuts on top. So the card itself is flat. Okay, now we can start putting the focal point pieces together. For the spaceship, I'm going to take that silver mirror piece and that acetate. And now I'm grabbing a different glue. This is Barely Arts. Uh, Gina K Connect will work as well. Anything that'll hold strong for plastics. It does take a little bit longer to dry, but uh, PVA glue doesn't hold up well for plastic, so I switch over to that for my plastics. For the little alien, I'm going to glue him to the black cutout layer. And the reason we're using the black cutout layer at all is because we want to hide our easy light underneath it. If I, if I wasn't going to put the easy light underneath, I probably would have just glued him to the back side of the acetate so you would kind of see the starry sky through it. But I think this works just fine. And notice when I glued the adhesive to the little guy there, I didn't put any adhesive up above um, on the part of the uh, acetate that shows. So it stays hidden there. And now we'll go ahead and start laying this out. The one light is longer than the alien or the spaceship. So I'm going to use the clouds to help cover up the push button. And that's also why I have uh, push me stamped onto the cloud. And I'm just going to kind of lay this out again here and figure out the placement for the tractor beam first but I don't want to glue it up so high that the clouds are sticking off the top or anything like that. So figuring that out and then I can add some adhesive to the vellum and I'm adding adhesive to the top of the vellum but for the bottom where you would see it instead of putting it on the vellum itself I put it on the cardstock and then dabbed off as much as possible. That's a trick I learned from Kelly at Lawn Fawn. It's such a good trick. You can see the adhesive at the top but not at the bottom. So that's how you do it. <laughs> um, and it doesn't matter at the top here because we're going to cover that up. Now I'll go ahead and stick that one light in place. And I'm just going to use some double sided adhesive. I'm putting it on the back of the light. And these little guys, if you haven't played with our lights yet, give them a try. They're so easy. <laughs> they really are. You just tape them down and sandwich them between your card pieces. Uh, think of them like flat flashlights. That's what I tell everybody. So at this point, I've got it taped to my card base. I'm putting a little more of that double stick tape on top of the battery clip because that'll hold the alien in place. And then this is where I'm bringing in that clear foam tape. The reason I'm bringing in clear foam here is because I'm going to stick it on top of that light. If I had um, put white foam on top of it, it would block the light. So I don't want to do that. For the clouds, it doesn't matter. So I am going to bring in some of my world's best foam tape. This stuff is really nice. Uh, it's repositionable at first and the release paper comes off much easier. So I'm going to go ahead and cover up the left side of the button. And you can see if I need to re reposition it, I can. This foam is very nice. <laughs> um, so I want to put some more adhesive on the other side of, or on the other cloud there. And I'm going to go ahead and stick the alien down now. And honestly, if I made this card again, I think I would have put 
the vellum above the light as well. Um, I was afraid that Santa would get like a, a backlit effect rather than the light glowing right down on him. But this one doesn't, I mean, the, the light is on top of the vellum rather than underneath it. So I kind of wish I had done it the other way. But I, it in the end, it still turns out really cute. I really like this one. After I get the second cloud in place, and those are flat bottom clouds, so I was kind of taking a little bit more time to make sure that they were straight across, uh, parallel to the top and the bottom of the card, because they shouldn't be crooked, the bottom should be straight. Uh, then I glued Santa in place into that tractor beam, and I had one more little cloud to go. And after I get him glued down, I think that wraps up the card. Since I'm not using any sequins or anything like that, <laughs> and the clouds are sort of taking that that spot, so uh, I wanted to take my time and figure out where to put that last cloud. All right, here it is, all finished. Isn't he cute? I like this one. It's silly, <laughs> but I think it's fun. Don't forget that today's video is part of a blog hop. I've got the next stop in the hop link down below. I've also got the little um, sign up sheet so that you can sign up to win prizes. Um, YouTube doesn't want us to pull winners from the comments anymore. So there's a little form. Just fill that out and you only need to fill it out once. If you're new to the channel, feel free to click subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, thanks for watching.